Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church for our August 30th, 2020 live stream service here at Grace. My name is Gary Brandenburg. I'm the interim pastor here at Grace. Uh, doing our technology today is Mike Wick. Our projection person is Karen Turkelson. Our children's message today will be given by Patty Gatke. And our, there will be a special message from our council president, Steve Garrison. And doing our liturgy today is Sandy Pellicari. You're invited to Grace to join in our parking lot Holy Communion service. It's each Sunday, starts at 9 a.m., and the service will be on your car radio, FM channel 104.1. You can park within two blocks of Grace Church. There will be outside ushers in the parking lot to give you instructions. The first place to park would be our parking lot. We're in the process of calling a new pastor. Our call committee is Eric Anderson, Sherry Clements, Samantha Colburn, Nancy Herbison, Heather Kurth, Martin Schmidt, David Schmidt, and Margie Welke. I heard this week they're working to continue their process and we're hoping they will be able to present a candidate to our church council soon. This August, our special offering goes to our sister's house. It's a Tomahawk homeless shelter. Their website is on the screen along with their telephone. We support our sister's house, not only in prayer, but in finances. Our introduction for our service today. The prophet Jeremiah speaks of the incurable word or wound of his suffering yet finds in God's word the delights of his heart. When Peter doesn't grasp Jesus' words about suffering, Jesus tells the disciples they will find their lives in losing them. Such sacrificial love is described by Paul when he urges us to associate with the lonely and not repay evil with evil. In worship, we gather as a community that we might offer ourselves for the sake of of our suffering world. Our gathering hymn is We Are Called, and the music is presented by a choir from Grace Lutheran Church here in Tomahawk.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you as we share in our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayer of the day. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience and give us strength to follow your command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Jeremiah. This is the introduction. Jeremiah delights in the word of the Lord. It's contract, con contradicted by the heaviness of God's hand upon him and God's seen seemingly unfaithfulness. God's tough love to Jeremiah says that if he repents, he will be allowed to continue in his strenuous ministry. Jeremiah is strengthened by the simple words, I am with you. The reading. O oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name. O oh Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice under the weight of your hand. I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to his people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you, for I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Our psalm is from Psalm 26, verses one through eight. Join me as we read together responsively. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for you have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consult with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go and 
procession around your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. The end of the reading. At this time, we would have our children's sermon, and Patty Gatke is going to share that with our children. But before she does that, I'd like to share a prayer that comes to us and is being shared by all the churches in Tomahawk on this day as our families and children prepare for school. Our teachers and administrators and all who work, we want them to know we're praying for them. So please receive this prayer. Our loving God, today we join with the churches, citizens, and faith groups in our Tomahawk community to ask your protection as we go back to school this week. We pray for safety and strength for students, teachers, administrators, bus drivers, secretaries, tech people, maintenance staff, food preparation and serving staff, and all support staff involved. We also ask the same for parents and grandparents who are being asked to play a major role in guiding their children's education at home. We pray for a safe and successful year for all our students as they adjust to a new way of learning. In God's loving name, amen. Now, Patty, come and share your children's message with us. Good morning. <clears throat> Today I want to talk to you about a cross. We learn from God's word, the Bible, that Jesus said to his disciples, and I'll read from Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Take up their cross and follow me. I wonder what Jesus was talking about. I know what a cross looks like, but what does a cross mean? Are we supposed to really carry a cross around with us all day long? That seems a little awkward, doesn't it? And how small or big or light or heavy is a cross? Well, in Jesus' time, the cross was about death. And Jesus carried a big, heavy cross. It is not easy to understand or talk about Jesus' death on the cross. In that way, the cross seems sad and scary. But God's children know the cr cross shows love. The cross reminds us that Jesus died and was raised to life again. God did this because God loves us. And the cross is a reminder of Jesus' great love for us and our call to follow him. This is a cross that I have hanging on my bedroom wall. It's light and it's easily visible from when I can walk by it as I enter my bedroom and I can see it before I go to bed at night. And I can look to it as a reminder that God is with me and that he gives me peace and I can rest. I wear a cross, this cross, around my neck every day. I find it helpful to remind myself not only who I am, but who I belong to. I belong to God. This cross gives me peace because I feel close to God. It also reminds me that sometimes there will be trouble. And during those times, God will stay with me and he will strengthen me and give me courage through every test. This, the cross reminds us that we can trust Jesus, <clears throat> that Jesus is with us, through easy and hard times, in every situation and through every emotion, whether it be happy, excited, angry, or scared. I remember taking tests in school, and when the teacher would say, take out your pencils, I knew there was about to be a test. Oh no, am I ready? The anxiety that would set in. I think Jesus is saying the same thing to his followers. There's a test coming. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you going to trust me? Trust that I'm with you and I care for you? You're getting ready to go back to school. 
And adults are trying to figure out the best way for that to happen and for that to do the safest, safest way. The return will be in a way that is very different from what you are used to, and that can be scary. When we fa face scary testing times, we must always remember to keep our eyes on Jesus. And don't be nervous. When you are scared, think about the cross to remind yourself of Jesus' great love, his great love for you and your call to follow him, a call to trust God and a call to love him and others. As a follower of Jesus, notice the number of crosses in your home this week. And each time you see one, take a moment to pray. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross to save us. And take this week to, re to use your imagination. Because if you don't have a, a cross within sight, or you're not wearing one, you can uh, draw one on your hand to remind yourself and say, God loves me. He is, and God is with me. <clears throat> and when you start back to school, carry the cross of Jesus in your hearts and mind, trusting that God will be with you on your first day and the next day and the next day and every day and in every way. And use the cross as a reminder to love as Jesus loves you. Let us pray. Loving God, please be with these children as they begin their new school year. Help them to pick up their cross as a way to love others through Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. And may a blessing be on you that the cross of Christ give you courage, hope, and love now and always. God loves you and so do I. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Paul presents benchmarks for faithful relationships with Christians and non-Christians. Love is the unflagging standard of our behavior. When we encounter evil, we do not resort to its tactics, but seek to overcome it with good. While Christians cannot control the actions and attitudes of others, we seek to live at peace with all people. The reading. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with a mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Preserve in prayer. Continue to the needs of saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wise, other than you are. And do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our gospel acclamation. Alleluia. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of your heart so that we may know the hope 
to which God has called us. Alleluia. The introduction of our gospel. After Peter confessed that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, Jesus reveals the ultimate purpose of his ministry. These words prove hard to accept, even for a disciple whom Jesus has called the rock. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The reading. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, that this might ever happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, for you are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your minds not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone want to become my disciples or my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their lives will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their own life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This morning, I have the opportunity to share with you my my last sermon. This week, I will go back to South Carolina and take my vacation time and end the contract that I have with you as your interim pastor. It's a good thing for you to experience this because life never goes on the way it always is. There's always changes. There's a time to begin something and there's a time to end something. This is the time that I'm ending my interim ministry here at Grace Lutheran Church. Thank you for this opportunity. It's a wonderful church. I pray that God will continue to do great things in this community through Grace Lutheran Church. But I would like to look at our text today because in a sense, this is an ending for Jesus and his disciples. For he's telling them that this is not gonna last forever. They're gonna go to Jerusalem Jesus is going to be uh, hurt, he's going to suffer, he's going to die, but he's going to raise again. You would think they were raising again would have really grabbed them and they said, oh, this will be okay. But Peter didn't get it. Peter was angry that what he was experiencing now would not continue into the future as it is. Peter rejected the fact that life is an interim. There's beginning and endings. There was a beginning for Jesus in Bethlehem, and there will be an ending for Jesus in Jerusalem, but Jesus will come again. And so I would say to all of you who are listening today, I want to thank you for the time I've got to know you, but don't think this is an ending, because it's said in a gospel text, the Son of Man is to come with his angels, and he will take us to be with him in heaven. So all these people here at Grace who are not here now, we will be in heaven and we'll begin to continue a relationship that we start here on earth. The disciples really didn't get that until after Jesus had died and until he had ascended. And then the hope of the second coming of Christ became so real for them. And today in our creed, we will say that we believe he will come again to judge the living and the dead. But more than that, he will come again to take us all to be with him in the home he has prepared for us. And so until that day, we need to remember Jesus' words. If any want to become my disciples, let them deny themselves. Let them take up their cross and let them follow me. The question is, how? How will that happen? And I would like to suggest the answer is in our room reading from Romans chapter 12. 
12.18 says this, If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. In a country in which people just go at each other like crazy, like cats and dogs, we as a Christian community are to, to demonstrate a peacefulness, a peacefulness. And we might not be able to make it happen with others, but it is to happen with us. And how will that be? What will it look like? Well, it'll be like taking up a cross. It's, it's hard to make genuine love with another person and to hate what is evil, especially when we do our taxes. We're, we're to hold fast to what is good. We're to love one another with mutual affection. We're to outdo one another in showing honor, not to lag in zeal, but to be ardent in spirit, serving the Lord. That means be energetic. Continue to do the things you do in the life of this church. And we're to rejoice with hope. We're, we're to be patient in suffering. A lot of people don't like that thought. They don't want to suffer. But the Bible is very clear. We will suffer and we are to be patient during those times. During COVID. We are to preserve and persevere in prayer. And we're to contribute to the needs of saints and extend hospitality to strangers. I'd like to say a word about that patience and suffering. Be patient during this time of COVID. People want to get back in this sanctuary and have church. I would suggest to you probably you'll know in October if that's possible. Just this morning when I was reading the paper from Columbia, South Carolina, they started elementary school and they started middle school. They've only been in it for a week, two weeks. Now they're closing down their middle schools because COVID-19 is so present. So understand the importance of patience and, and understand the dynamics of persecution and disagreement. And our text says today we're to bless those who we disagree with and who persecute us. Even those who curse us. And we're to rejoice with those who rejoice. We're to weep with those who weep. We're to live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty. Don't think you got all the answers. But associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. And if it is possible, so far as it depends with you, live peaceably with all. And the second thing I'd like to share with you from Romans, as we deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Christ. It's hard to be a loving person with other people because we tend to love ourselves more. So, so when it comes to living peaceably, oftentimes that's a denying of ourself and is taking up a cross of welcoming those through whom Life might seem more unpeaceable, but do it. And the last thought today is do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. It's hard to deny ourselves, take up the cross, and follow Jesus. It, it's hard to show good to people who would do evil. But this is what Paul wrote. Do not repay anyone evil for evil but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself. Don't worry about getting even. Worry about being true to love and care of your neighbor. Leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I want to compliment this congregation. You do a lot of good things in this community. We have a food pantry. We have a house, the Grace House, that is open to all kinds of groups that come. Alcoholic Anonymous, Salvation Army, anybody, anybody who needs a space, this church provides it to them free of charge. We, we want to help people. 
as much as we can because we know that you overcome evil. You overcome that which is not good in our world by doing good. So the people of grace, continue to follow Jesus. Deny yourselves. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. And I look forward to that day when Jesus comes back again and we can share some of the memories of this interim time. Amen. As people who are in the care of God, let us give thanks by confessing our belief in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
Amen. And confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we share our prayers of intercession for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us trust in you that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God of all nations, you call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even though we, name, we are named as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in our communities. We pray for the cities of, of Kenosha, Milwaukee, Racine, right here in Wisconsin. We pray you'll help us overcome that which is violent and build towards peace. Lord, in your mercy. In God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing. And heal the sick. Especially we pray for the, the people of Louisiana, Texas. Pray, Lord, that you'll protect them during this hurricane time. Lord, in your mercy. And God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope. To be patient in suffering. And to preserve in prayer. Make our congregation a workshop of your love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God of all grace, you give us everlasting life. We love, we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light, in your, and in our remembering. Give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in the certain hope that nothing can separate us from the love of God, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this time in our service, we would receive our offering. And again, I want to thank you for mailing in your offering through checks online giving, and stopping by the church and entering the entrance area and placing your, your offerings in a basket. This has been a good time for this church. We have learned that we're sustainable, even when we can't gather in worship like we normally would. But this church is faithful. This congregation is meeting the, the challenges of this time. And we want to say thank you and offer this prayer. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Our blessing, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. God, the creator, Jesus, the Christ, 
and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. As this was Pastor Gary's last worship service with us, I wanted to take a minute to say thank you for his leadership and guidance over the past year as our interim pastor. You have been very helpful during this time of transition for our church and leave us ready to welcome the next pastor God has chosen to lead grace. We wish you and your wife Kathleen many blessings as you are able to reunite after a long time apart. The unusual circumstances of our current world have made the job of guiding a church through transition even more challenging since we have not been able to meet in person. I, and I think everyone, appreciates the way you adapted to the situation and got done what needed to be accomplished. I would now ask that you all join me in prayer. Father God, thank you for Pastor Gary and the leadership he has provided to Grace Lutheran Church. We pray that you will continue to bless and guide Grace as, we now, as he now departs for home. Give Pastor Gary safe travels back to South Carolina. Bless he and Kathleen as they are able to now spend time together. Keep them healthy and safe as they now begin another new phase of their life together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.